TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment. So, oh, we are live. Dang, I'm going to edit that out. We're live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. Because we're going somewhere around the world. I don't know where these people from yet, but... We're going to find out, man. Twitch.com, that's where you can catch the live streams. Usernames at the bottom. And we also got Patreon.com. Watch videos five to seven days a week, man, including Premier League highlights, man. This is by a channel called Justify. Hold on. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. It's by a channel called Justify. This is the title of it. I'm not going to read it out loud. But I'm interested. I want to see, like, what happened. Hit the like button, man. Let me sub up. Yeah, how's it, brother? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm okay. I'm just thinking about, you know, you, um, the story that you're gonna tell us today. You know, um, it's not an ordinary story that this has got to be like somewhere in Africa. We would normally get on the platform, right? But um. For a viewer who's looking at you on the lens of the camera, who are you? Uh, my name is Musa. Most people who know me call me Favent. I am from Escort and I'm living in Johannesburg. Growing as Escort was nice. Mm. I mean, it's a rural area, so anyone who has. Where is that? That's Africa? Been or who were grown in a rural area will tell you that place is nice. Mm. Um, you've got to head uh, cows, uh, you go to the mountains to fetch firewood and stuff, uh, you got to play around the, the river, it's all nice. Mm. But in the midst of that, I got myself confused because I wanted to play with girls. I also wanted to play with boys. So in most cases, I didn't know who to play to, with, rather. Is this some type of euphemism? Like, is, what are we doing right now? Okay, he got on pearls. All right, okay, continue. So in most cases, I was, I was just alone. Uh, after battling with the identity like that from back home, so I felt like I was out of place. And I later on then decided that I was going to go and leave the house to God knows where. I left and at some point I got myself living in the streets of Deben in 2009. So living Africa, in the streets right? of Deben... Because at first I did not sleep on the street. I was labeled as a street kid, but living in a, in, in, a, in a place of safety. So it's a house where there's like everybody, everybody comes there. All the street kids, they come, they bath, they eat. And then those who want to sleep on the street, they go back to... It's like a halfway house you're talking about? Sleep wherever, and then they come back in the morning. So that's the place I lived in. And in that place, they would then tell stories that um, that side of the, the, the town, it is where the gangs called 26 are. It's the territory of the, the 26. It's Africa. South Africa. Six. And if you go further down uh, towards workshop, and Deben Station, those areas, it is the, the territory of the 28th. So they are saying you are lucky because you landed it here in the territory of the 26th. If you were there, 
you could have been in, in some tragic things. I'm like, okay, what's that? And they'd start telling me, there's a guy called Somnyama. He's like the, the leader of that territory. That territory is like almost his. So that guy, when you are new in the, in, 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 in the area, he gets you and he sexually abuses you. If you... What do you mean by that? So like when you move into his area... Like on the app, that's a part of the application process. What are we talking about? Uh, not resistant. He will just just be him, and you're done. But if you are resistant, uh, and it takes him help to get to you, all those people who helped him are going to have their way with you. So that story just sounded like ah, it's just one of those scary stories. It- that sounded like a myth. I'm not gonna lie. Listen to me when listen to me clearly. If that was a story that I heard, man, I'm thinking about moving in this little neighborhood over here. What you think, man? I heard this, that, and the third. I believe it. I believe it. It's too. It's too wild that is that I that I believe it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not moving there no more. I, that's not something I'm taking a chance with. Not that type of story. No way. It didn't really register to me, but I knew the story. So fast forward to 2012, and now I had exhausted my chances of living in that site, the 26th territory. So then I moved to the site at the station and uh, workshop. So when I got there, oh, I'm mixing it. Okay. 2012 is when this happened. But I want to start with 2011, when I actually moved to that side of the city. So when I moved there, I was then introduced to a group of gay men who lived on the street. So it was nice. We like a community. And I did not realize that... Shout out to the community. We were protected by someone. There is a guy called Pat. That guy was also, just like us, a gay man, just a little bit scarier than the rest of us. And he was tall, he's dark, and and stuff. So Pet was protecting us against uh, the foreign people. So would used to give Pet money. Sometimes you wouldn't even realize that it's more like you're paying rents to him. You give him money. If you did not give him, someone would tell you, go give Pet some money. Pet needs money. Sometimes he'll even come and, and borrow from you some money, but he'd never return it. So it did not make sense to me then that it was protection. And then I went home. I came back in 2012. When I came back in 2012, and then I came back to the news that Pet had died some time ago. Like, oh, okay. Um, Let me move my mic because I need to be close to the keyboard. And then few few weeks after I'd arrived, I think a week or so after I'd arrived, I noticed that now I have two guys who are becoming my friends. But they do not identify as gay men. They just, they are a friend of the group. And so they just come all the time. And sometimes you sleep, excuse me, sometimes you sleep with them as a community and stuff. So those two guys now became my closest friends. I could say best friends. Uh, We're going to eat. They are here. I'm going to the toilet. They are here. Sound like they was grooming you. They was waiting to make their move. Everywhere I go, they are with me, like my good friends. Mm. And then this one day, we are sitting. It's, it's in the morning, and we are sitting where we used to sleep. And then another friend of mine, Mam Joacha, and myself are sitting just further away from everybody else. And at some point, we looked towards the, um, 
the corner there, there is this guy who is sitting and is elevated from everybody else. Everybody is sitting like underneath or beneath him and is elevated. I'm looking at that scenery and I'm like, okay, now who is that guy who's eating all bossy there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I then just shut that thought. After some time, Mam Jaha asks me, uh, do you know some nyam? Now, it just registered to my head that uh, I knew that there, was, there could be someone like that mm. in this side of town. Mm. I've never met them. And now, him asking me about that, that, that guy just scared me. Like, okay, uh, what's happening? It's like, um, Samyam was the guy that from this first story. Where if you ain't come give it to him or you made it hard to where him to get it, he get like everybody. That's some young, right? Do you know him? Like, yeah, I know him, but I've never met. Just that I know his stories. Mm. It's like, oh, okay. Do you see that guy uh, sitting over there? I'm like, yeah, at, that's him. Like, hey? So that's him. He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So what should I do now? He's like, I don't know. Run. But if you think you want to run, Make sure that you don't run to Deben because in Deben he has eyes, ears, hands, legs everywhere in Deben. So if you want to go, like run, you should rather run home. And leaving home in 2012, I'd made a vow that I'm never coming back here ever again. I just felt like this was my last, um, my last time being at home. And this is Africa. This is not like America where where the where everything's accepted, I'm pretty sure, like, as a communal member in Africa, it was probably rough in any neighborhood, right? So, now I'm thinking, I can't go home. I've made a, I've made a promise that I'm never going home. So, there should be another way of running from this guy. Mm. And then the whole day, oh, before the whole day, and so he says, yeah, just do what you can. So I get up there. I get up. I don't want to run because if I run, I'm thinking that it would look suspicious. Okay, where are you running to? So I just walk. On my way walking, I hear them shouting, hey, hey, hey. Now, my name is not hey. I'm like, okay. If <laughs> they somehow run. <laughs> That's a fact, bro. Your name not hey, it's Musa. Run towards me, and then they catch me, take me to the sky. Then I'm asked, why did I not respond? I'm like, my name is not hey. I did not know you were talking to me. So his boys were calling you while you were walking? Yes. Okay. So, and then at some point, they start calling me with my name now. I'm like, okay, now I have not double up. I have to go. So I went there. I met this guy. So... Coming towards him, because now I just want to see his face, because I've never seen the face. I just want to see his face and, and, uh, and, uh, and all. So coming towards this guy, I'm like, hey, boo. but this is like an old guy, Ubaba, like Ubaba. And he looks very innocent. Looking at him, he looks very innocent. Uh, so I, Don't let that innocence fool you. That's a part of it. Get there and I greet him. In Zulu, Saubon Abab. He's like, hi, how are you? I'm like, okay, I'm good. He's like, okay, cool. So who are you? I tell him my name and I tell him where I'm from. He's like, oh, okay. Don't you want to go home? I'm like, damn shit. So he's giving me an escape. Imagine I wanted to run. So here he is uh, actually asking me if I want to go home. Yes, I do want to go home. He's like, okay, if you do want to go home, I can help you. But I do not have money to give you to go home. However, I can give you money for you to start a business so you can have money to go home. Like, oh, okay, maybe that sounds better. I'd... I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. If it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. What do you mean you can't give me money to go home, but you can't give, you give me money to start a business? Ain't that more? See, uh, this is a business you can be selling sweets, maybe, 
or cigarettes. I'm like, okay, cool. Let us try and do that. And, and then he starts saying, but I don't want you staying here because it's not safe on the streets. Mm. Uh, how about you come stay with me? I live in a house. How about you come stay with me in that house? And like, okay, maybe that sounds better uh, compared to living in the streets. Like, okay, so I'm going to work now. I should uh, oh, be coming back at around seven-ish, seven, quarter past seven. Uh, can I fetch you there? I'm not going to lie. At this point in the story, he... He seems... Like, just like misinformed. Like, I don't know how you was misinformed. You heard the stories about the man. And then the first time you met him, you moved him to his crib. I may not nothing. Then I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm like, okay. And then he goes. Now, as he goes, now I notice that there's three more guys that he's with who are going with him. And that was his bodyguards. I don't know if I should call it like that. And so they went. If I should call it like that. And bodyguards, I don't know if I should call it like that. I'm trying to figure out what part of the story was the shoulders for. Like, it didn't even add up. But can, to continue. That was his bodyguards. I don't know if I should call it like that. And so they went. Now, the whole day I spent... I ain't gonna lie to you. I've never heard an African dude tell a story. It's kind of like captivating, like, because you want him to, like, hurry up, bro. Say the next words, like, but, like, it's, like, it's the perfect pace. It's building a lot of, what's the intensity for the story? And asking people, what should I do? What should I do? Because this is a, is, is a non-practice uh, in the streets of Deben. And so everyone probably have an advice would get, okay. This is how I escaped because some people have escaped and some couldn't. So uh, now I'm asking people, what should I do? People are saying, no, just go home. And then some are saying, no. Oh, uh, home where? Like where home you? In, in escort. In, in escort okay. Yes. And some are saying, no, he doesn't like girls. And he doesn't like people who look like girls. So just get yourself a weave, get yourself some dress and some high heels. Wear that, he would not come anywhere close to you. I'm like, okay, probably that sounds like a good idea. But the, now, the best idea sounded like going home. Whoever told you to grab a wig and put a dress on it was out of their mind. Yeah, just try it. You'll be all right. No, go home. No, I don't have money to buy those things. So now that idea is off. Okay. okay. What else it's a can dumb you idea do? anyway. People are saying, what you can do is to not sleep in one place. Today sleep here, tomorrow sleep there, the other day sleep the other place. So that he doesn't know where exactly are you. You just go around. I wanted to ask, when you were having a chat with him, and he was asking you, what's your name? Where are you from? Yeah. Was he aware that you were homosexual? I don't want to say yes. I also don't want to say no, because what I had read... He had to have been aware. ...realized later on is that those two guys that I thought were my friends were actually his agents. So I'm sure they told him everything he needed to know about yeah. me. Okay. But I knew the two guys was doing something funny. Also, he did not come to me because I was a homosexual. He came to me because I was a boy and I was new in the street. That is what it does. So, um, 
and then someone else says, oh yeah, you can just sleep anywhere else. Just sleep here and there and there and there so that he doesn't know where exactly are you. I'm like, okay, I think that sounds like a better idea. And then, it sound, that sounds like a better idea than going home? And that night, I then... I get it, though. He said he wasn't feeling accepted at home or something, right? Didn't he say that? Decided that I was going to sleep at Gray Street. So, with another friend of mine, Ubaso. So, it is now, like, the afternoon, around 6, 7, we go to Gray Street. We lay our blankets down. We are getting ready to sleep. So, just because, before everyone could fall asleep, we're just sitting, we're chatting and all. So, I have those two friends besides me. One the side and the other the side. The, the spies? And then... Excuse me. One says, no. come, I'll take you to this place I know. He will not find you there. And then this one decides, uh, says, no, do you know where that place is? I'm like, I don't know. Like, he's taking you exactly to where this guy stays. How? Okay, so what's going on? One of your friends tried to backdoor you? Pause. Uh, and then he says, but I can take you to a better place. Uh, that place is dark. He won't be able to see you. Even if he came at night, he would not be able to see you because it's dark. So that's where I can take you to. This one, this side says, do you know where that is? I'm like, no, I don't. And then he says, that's exactly where that guy stays. How? So... Guys, what's happening? what's happening? Yeah. Because I like I spent the whole day people advising me of how to stay away from this guy. And I just I'm gonna be real with you, man. The best advice you got was going home. Just thought it was genuine. I am hoping that you as my Nah nah. They probably got paid. My friend are also are going to ad- advise me on how to escape from this guy mm. but now it seems like you're actually driving me straight to where he stays so what's happening i'm battling with that thought and during that moment i see people's eyes fixed across the road you know when there's a fight yeah. so you see people they are like what he seems very naive back in the day it's happening there so now then I follow everybody else. I fix my eyes across the road. There he is. You? With three boys. And they're carrying, I, I want to say sticks, but it was not like stick sticks. Like your tennis bats and your cricket bats, like those things that they used to play. So they are... For like fighting. Carrying those things and they're just tapping on the palm like that. So for like negativity... Tapping, tapping. Just doing this. Yes. yes. And from where I come from, if you are in trouble and you come home, whoever an adult is there and is doing that, it means you are in for a big hiding. Yeah. So now I realize, it's okay, something is going to happen here. Mm. Okay. Uh, so that I save myself from drama and everybody else. Let me just go straight to them. Yeah. So I get up, I go straight to them, and I ask, are you now here for me? Mm. They say, yes, we are. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let us go. So, and then they say, no, let us go fetch your, your, your things first. I go get my clothes. When I'm trying to wrap up my blankets, they say, no, you won't need those. I'm like, okay, cool. And then we go. As we are going... My two friends are also following. Uh, it hasn't really registered in my mind. That them is two more of his men. And that those guys are not my friends. They're just playing friends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I see them following. I'm like, okay, so now I have back up. Uh, even if I try to resist, those guys are here to help me. They are my friends. That's a six count. I count six people. Two of your friends. 
the guy, the main guy, and then no, that's only five. All right. So we we go and then return on this road. I think it's it's one or two streets away from Grace Street. We turn and it's a dark passage. We go in there. And then it goes into this building. It's a huge building that looks like the last person who stayed there was 20 years ago. It looks terrible. It looks scary. It looks derelict. Learned that from the UK. Y'all can use it. Uh, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Derelict. So it goes in. I'm derelict. Like, okay, so this is it. No, I'm not going in there. And then they're instructing me to go in. This is now the boys okay. because he's already inside. He, okay. That guy, that guy is a boss, Shem. He he delegates. He doesn't do anything. He just he just went in, and now his boys now had the duty to carry me in or get me in. Y'all keep in mind that this is the twenty six gang, twenty six the the twenty six gang. Right. Like go in, I'm not going in there. Go in, I'm not going in there. Now they. Then decided they were, they were going to carry me up to take me into the house. How? I'm like, okay, I wonder how are they going to do it? It's just three of them. To my surprise, my two friends are helping. Helping to carry you into in, the dark house. Into the dark house. Wow. Yes. It's a lot happening. I'm thinking of. So there's five. My Plus Lord, what them. is going to happen tonight? I'm thinking those guys I thought were my friends are directing me to where this guy stays. And now those guys, my friends, are helping those guys to carry me into the dark house. So it was a it, lot. Did it register? To yet? Just think about. So we we get into the house. It's a room, man. It's so I'm trying to figure out at what point did the first story that you ever heard about going to that 26 gang area start to like play in your head and be like, hey, this could be true. So it's a flat, right? So you go up the stairs, and then I think it's the first floor. And then there's rooms, rooms, rooms. Most of them do not have doors, but this one has a door. So you go in, it's like a room. And then there is a chair somewhere there. They tell me you can sit there. Like, okay. So I go and sit on that chair. I sit on that chair and soon after that they, they were cooking somewhere. They asked me, Can we dish up for you? I'm like, no, I'm fine. I don't want food. I'm like, okay. They dish up for everybody else. They eat. And I think another thing that I noticed there, my friends were very familiar with the place. Even with the dishing up, it, it was, everything was normal to them. They were very familiar with the place. But again, I'm just payroll. trying to shy away from that thought. And then later on, now we get to, they get to, to make the bed for the guy. And they make the bed for him. He goes in his sleeps and then he invites me in, come and sleep. I'm like, no, I don't want to sleep. He says, okay, fine. And then they let me sit. Everybody else goes to sleep. Sometime after that, he then says... All in the same room? But we are all sleeping, so you can't just be sitting there. Come and sleep, and you are sleeping here with me. So I'm like, okay, now it really looks awkward for me. Let me just go sleep. I went there, I slept beside him. So I was wearing two jeans. Uh, for some reason, I thought those two jeans were going to save me. So I was wearing those two jeans. I get in. He says, no one sleeps here uh, with clothes on. So now I get up, I get naked. I, I had like some undies on. I get up and then I undress those two jeans and then I go down again to sleep. And then he had something like a roll on that was applying on, the, on his skin. He's applying this thing. Like I'm looking at him like, I, I wonder what's happening here. It's, Everywhere, like all his yeah, 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 yeah. Everywhere. And then he then offers that roll on thing to me. It's like, take this. I'm like, oh. This is diabolical. This is asinine. 
Okay, what is this? It says this is um, protection against mosquitoes. So use it like, now. Thank you. Like, you don't want it. I'm like, nah, I don't want it. Like, okay. Because at that time, I just don't want anything to do with those guys. I don't even want to be here. So, and then we carry on sleeping. As we are sleeping, now, these two, my friends, are having a conversation. They are not your friends. Uh, I'd say they are arguing. One is saying, it's me first. And the other one is saying, no, it's me first. So it's that conversation, no, it's me first. And then the other one, First for what? No, no, it's me first. Um, I don't know what they are talking about, but I can just hear what is being said. So this guy says, uh, what are you talking about? You are making noise. And then one of them says, I was very close to bringing this guy here. So after you, it is me. Like, no, do not talk nonsense. Just sleep. So at that point, are you realizing that the story is about this is true? He's saying after who? After you or him? After him. After him. The so, Somnyama guy. Oh, so it's After him. After him, it's me. Okay. How do you say this? So this guy, the two friends. Yeah. They was trying to get in line? Yes. They're arguing. And then they are saying, After Somnyama, it's either one of them. So that have, it hasn't really clicked in your mind. What are they actually talking about? It hasn't. Is this guy dumb? How would all of how has all of this happened and you're you're in the bed now at this and it's still not clicked? It's still not registering? It's okay, I wonder what are they saying? Yeah. It's if benefit of the doubt was a person, it'd be him. A conversation in the house that I, I don't even have to entertain because it has nothing to do with it. It's one of his boys, right? It has everything to do with you. And the inside of you. So, like, let's clear that up. Pause. Let's pause that, but I'm just saying. Yes. Where are your friends? It's them, actually. Oh, okay. My friends. Okay. That we're arguing. Okay. And then, so he shuts them off. A few moments after that, he now starts touching me. I think for the longest time, whilst I'm sleeping, I'm just thinking, when is this going to start? Uh, is it even going to start? Or they are just going to let me go free? Mm. Or maybe he was literally genuine when he said he wanted to help me get money to go home. I'm just imagining things when I think something bad might happen here. And so now then it starts touching me here. Like, okay. So it's happening. Um, so it touches. Are you happy about it or no? Like, what's... He touches me, I throw his hand off. Okay, you don't want... All right. I got ass. I don't know what's... Touches me again. I throw his hand off. He touches me for the third time. I throw his hand off. And then he says, What that mean? He did not even swallow that. They got up. It's like they were ready or... I, I don't know. He did not even swallow that Yala uh, Lenja thing. And then they got up. Came straight to me trying to press me down. Now, I'm also trying to fight. I'm trying to fight. I'm trying to fight. And at some point, they didn't manage because I was still facing up at that time. So it, at some point, they managed to get me to face down. This was also avoidable. This is this is probably the most avoidable scenario that I've ever heard in my life. 
Now I'm facing down, but I'm still battling with them. Like I'm battling, I'm battling. And then one of them now had a knife with him. So he's pricking me on my back. We are going to hurt you. We are going to hurt you. So he did not like step, step. He was just pricking. So trying to scare me, I think. And now I remember that uh, people say that if you are lucky, you can go out of that place alive. If not, you might die in there and they bury you God knows where. Oh, so now you recall the story. Okay. Like, okay. So it's, it's either I'm dying because they have killed me with a knife or... So I just let my body loose. I let my body loose and then he comes. He does whatever and then the other one come. I'm not sure who because I was facing down. And I know it's all six of them. Uh, and then at some point, so I just six of them, including your friends, as including well. those two friends. Just a quick one: your friends were they straight or homo? Straight as a ruler. I guess that's up for interpretation because I, 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 ain't no way them boys are straight. Ain't no way. I'm just, I'm a, I gotta lay that out there. Ain't no way, bro. They was praying on you. Ain't no way. This ain't jail. It's women around. Ain't no way. Straight, straight. No, them. They got a little crooked in their rulers. This, this is, this is crooked, crooked. Being my friends were not my friends. They were playing friends. Okay. They were agents to get me to go to this guy's. Agents of the butt. <laughs> my bad. This is not funny. This is really not funny. This place. But for them to do that, they had to, to be friends with me. So they were not really my. I just thought they were they friends, you but up. they were not. So the boss started, then while other guys were holding you, then the next one, and then the next one, then, then the, the next, next one. one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. At some point, I, I think I slept. I don't know because what I remember is is him getting on, and then after him, someone else got on. After that, I. I don't really remember what happened after. The only thing I remember was me waking up in the morning around eight ish. They did it to you, fell asleep or, or got knocked out from pain? Like, what was the, what, like, that's, this is, this is, it, the, any question that I have to ask is a pause at the end of the day. This is unfortunate for you. So I, I do not know if I died a little or. Oh, excuse me. I had to sneeze. Or what? I don't know. But the last thing I remember was around that. And the next thing was in the morning. That's crazy. So we woke up and I woke up in the morning. Everyone was up already. Like nothing they happened? I also prepared porridge for everyone to eat. They're asking me again, can we dish up for you? I'm like, no, I don't want. I'm like, okay, cool. And then he asks, do you want to go where I got you? Or you want to stay here with the rest of the guys? I want to go back where I was. It's like, okay, cool. You can go. No fighting. No fighting. And now to my head, it, it gets to me that, see, even the money of starting the business was a lie. And, and then also, why is it now a choice? Because when you spoke to me yesterday, you sounded like a caring father who doesn't want me to be out there in the dangers of the... He got what he wanted. ...streets. 
and you want me to be in the house with you. And the next day, now you are giving me a choice. Do you want to go back or you want to stay here? I'm like, so this guy was never genuine about anything. He, he just wondered what had happened last night. When you look at this man, how old is he? At that time. Good question. At that time, I think he would have been in his like mid early 50s. Early 50s. Mid early 50s. How old were you at the time? At that time, I was 16. This is 2012. Oh, you were 16. That puts a lot of the story into context. We're finding out you're 16, 31 minutes into it. That, that, that's where the obliviousness comes from. That's where the naiveness, that's where the inexperiences to listen to red flags came from. Okay. At, at that time, I was 16. So now I, I went back to Got my it. friends. And uh, sorry, what friends? Quick one. The boys. Let me let me start with the with the friends. Your friends that you were you went there with. Yeah. How old were they? One was a little bit younger than me. Okay, I think a little bit younger than you. Yeah. So I, you were sixteen. Yeah. So he might probably be. He might 15. have been thirteen, twelve. Yeah. Oh, this dude was this 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 dude was. A crazy predator. Somewhere there. And, and the other one? And the other one could have been my age group, maybe 16, 17, or 15K. And then the the boys. And then that his boys, I think they were, they were a little bit older than me. I can't even have their face registered on my mind. Because I think I saw them that day and... I do not remember seeing them after that day. I don't know. Maybe I did see them after that day, but they were like seasoned boys. They were they were not uh, they were not younger than me. Don't you think what happened to you? It was some sort of a ritual because remember he put something on and he might have lied that look this is just for mosquitoes in a way. Yeah, ne? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe this could have been some like type of cult ritualistic freaky some wild. Maybe you thought about it. I'm you're... thinking about it now. <laughs> Cause he put something first before he touched you and he gave you something as well. But you said no, but he still continued. But why would he put something and say this is for mosquitoes? You guys were young. You were not even 20. Young, young, young. Obviously, these boys, I'm sure maybe they were in their mid-20s, early 20s. Early 20s, but it's probably. Wow, Acho. Like, when you look at this man, he's your dad. He's even your grandfather, I'm sure. And the, the, the terrible thing is that when he speaks to you... That's how I was coming you, you get respect for him. It's like, Obaba, he's... Yeah, buddy was really grooming things, and that's just bothersome. And just how he suggests that uh, I can help you, I don't want you sleeping here, just sounds like your your your, your father. Yeah, it's like yeah, this guy. And then chiggy chiggy, that happens, and it it, it confuses you. So I went back to my friends. No one was going to ask me anything because it is known that when you go there, what are you going there for? Nobody asked me anything, nothing. But then after that day, I had, I had uh, complications. And I was bleeding. Uh, sometimes I'd say I want to go to the toilet and nothing comes out but blood. Mm. And I don't know, was it painful or itching, but it was like a, a, an itching pain. I don't know how to describe that pain, but there was a pain like that. I think for a week or two. And so 
Soon after that, he he came back. He doubled back? And because also from that night until that day he came back, I wished for him to come back. You you did what? I wished for him to come back. <laughs> I know what, how that sounds. <laughs> I wished for him. Is it, oh, is it, um, what's that thing called where the victim, where a victim, like, you know what I'm, y'all know what I'm trying to say where the victim, like, wants or thinks they are in love or something. What's the, that one? Him to come back and say, I am sorry. Oh, okay. Because the guy that I met on that morning, when he was asking me, do I not want to go home? He can help me get money so I can be able to go back home. And also, he doesn't want me sleeping on the streets because it's dangerous for me. And then the guy that I saw later on that night is not the same person. So I'm just... Uh, he was putting on a show. Tell them what they want to hear. He, he was really, 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 really grooming, unfortunately. Hoping that he would come to me and say, no, maybe I was demon-possessed or, I don't know, just an excuse of saying um, what happened was wrong mm. and I'm sorry that it happened, but maybe gay, it was not me, it was something else. So he came that day. And you would have been cool? Also night around seven ish so he comes and then i see him coming I'm like, okay there he is i wonder what is he here for and he comes he stands in front of me and he taps my feet he's like hey i'm like yeah he said i came to speak to you like what do you want from me He's saying, I came to you because I want to apologize. But my pride doesn't allow me to do that here with all those people looking at me. Oh, man, he's... What was this dude, a psychologist? He was playing ultimate mind games. He knew exactly you wanted an apology, and now he's luring you again? Is that what I'm about to hear? Can we go somewhere private so I can apologize to you? I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. So you do hear prayers, and you have heard my prayer, and you have just answered. Because now this guy is coming back to say he wants to apologize. Whatever happened that day was not, was not meant to happen. So... As excited as I was, I get up. I follow him. Now he is walking a little bit faster. And me as a person, I can't walk fast, Jay. So I'm walking behind him. And his guys are walking behind me. So it's him, myself, and... The At that point, like, no red flags. There was absolute... At 16, are we that? Guys. How many were they? I think it was three again, okay. but my three, focus was four. not on them. My focus was on him to say what he wanted to say. So we go, and then he gets in, into the building. Same building. It doesn't look like the same building then, okay. because this is now the front side of the building. But he got okie doked, tw okie doked twice. The one you used that day was the back side. The back side looks terrible. Now the front side looks way better than the, 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 the other side. So I'm thinking to myself, this is alarming. Of, okay, I wonder where is this? Anyway, I just want to hear him say sorry. This is all a plot. I follow him. And then, how? We are back in the same house, the same room. Yeah. So, what privacy is this? But I'm 
not really worried about privacy. I'm just yearning, hoping that I hear him say, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie. The way this dude's not worry is set up is insane. Like, at this point, you always need to be worried now from that point on. So... Don't tell us what you think, yeah. what I think. So he, he sits. Now I see my chair. It's still there. So it's now my chair. It was the last time I sat there. So I go and sit on that chair. And then he says, um, what we did that day was nice. And you are here not because I want to apologize. You are here because we have to do it again. Whole life, brother. I'm thinking the same thing. Brother just got okie doke twice. This is insane. At, at, at that time, I felt like I was dreaming. Uh, I wanted to question because now, for some time, I was just praying that, okay, so this is my prayer answered. And now, when he says that, I want to question no good how God. So I have already said thank you. And so now this happens. You got to use wisdom at some point. I know you were 16, but God. This is. So then I just knew that I just had to go in with the program and then we get done and probably I can go back to where I was. So I don't want to say luckily, but I think luckily it was only him that night, the second night. So got done and then asked again, do you want to go where you were or you want to sleep here? I'm like, I want to go back. He said, okay. Then I went back to my friends. Ish, dude. This is so emotional, man. Um, it's not nice. It's not. It's not nice, and it is like emotional. But the emotions I have are a little bit different. Like I'm, I'm flabbergasted at at what happened and how it happened twice. Like it was okie doke, and like and like no red flags. Where was your friends that you was with to say no? And I know you couldn't go like and just be like no, no, nah, I'm good because he would have did what he would have did because you know it was that power dynamic. But at the same time, like I leave two two weeks, I would like leave. And I, I used to cry thinking about it back then. It's not your fault, man. Not your fault. Uh, and now it's it's because now it just comes at, as flashbacks. Yeah. And PTSD. Now, rather than crying, when so it happens, I think about it when maybe I'm disappointed or angry. Yeah. Or when I'm excited, I. Think Think about that day and I want something that would almost feel like that day. So I think then crying, that is what I do now, which is, I think it was better when I cried. How did you escape? Um, escape the streets. Yeah. Well, escape Devon. Devin, yeah. Devin, yes. So, and then I then stayed in Devin until 2015. So 2013, oh, yeah. I then was involved with the church okay. called uh, Restoration, Restoration Ministries. Yeah. Okay. So you, you stayed in Devon from 20, 2012 till 2015. Uh, Did that thing okay. continue to happen or it stopped in no, some point? No, it was just then. Never happened again. Okay, so it happened twice. It okay. happened twice. Okay, so you you went into and ministry. Funny story. Yeah. Before we get Still to the church. Still was crazy. And 
then I had another friend now because it's like the gay community is growing. So, <laughs> I have this friend. That friend is 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 Lopereas. Go see. He is the giant. <laughs> so that friend. Now we are now sleeping together. We I then moved from you... where I used to sleep at the corner. Yeah. And then I went to Mansell Street Market. And then when we were there, it was now a community of a larger community. It's like. There's women there, there's straight men there, and there's now us gay men. So then I had a friend, Ngosi. Ngosi got someone, don't know where, he came with. And then knowingly, Somyama was going to come and have his way with him. So that night, it was his night for him to come fetch him. I think they've spoken and I don't know, was it that day or what? Did you warn but him? When they were speaking, he promised him that he was going to... Because the guy was from here in Johannesburg. Yeah. So he promised the guy that, no, I'm going to take you to the social workers. I'm connected and all that. But I don't want you to sleep here on the street. Come and sleep in my house. And so Uncle C went to that guy. He's like, no, that guy is not going to take you to any social work. He's going to harass you. Uh, so the guy knew now when he came at night, so the guy was scared because it was still news to him. I was like, scared, he doesn't know what to do. And then when he comes, he speaks to the women. It's like, yeah, I have heard that there's this new guy here, so I'm connected, I know social workers and stuff, so I came to take him so that when I wake up tomorrow morning, I take him to the social workers. Because he defiled that man that night. And I think he made me think that I should have fought for myself. I should have, I don't know how. Because Somyama left without that boy that night. Because he told him, you are not going anywhere with this boy. And so he left. And then he just made me think that probably I was too weak. When, when that happened. Okay, coming back now to the ministry. So I joined the church and um, restoration ministries. Mm. And then this boy was still there, this boy. And at some point, I helped, I tried to help him because his story was he he's from Gomashu and lived with his parents there and his brother. And then they were sent to a shop. They came back. The house was on fire. It was a sad story. Gee. I mean, all street kids, we, 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 we tell stories, like sad story. Like uh, my story was my sister drinks a lot. So when he, she comes back home from drinking, she beats everyone, uh, me and her kids. But her oh, kids were taken sucks. by the father's that family. Sucks. Yeah, so it's only me left. She was now beating me alone, mm. which was lies. Um, and so this guy now, his story was his parents bent in the house. Uh, now he, wa he wants help looking for his brother because it was him and his brother who survived that fire. Mm. So we were then trying to help him. And then I got connected with the... The, the Williams family who helped me further the investigation of the family, and then ended up finding the that the the, the brother. Went to happen, Guti. The brother is not the brother, but a friend that he was visiting. And then, so I think then the Williams family noticed that even when. The feeding scheme was discontinued. I remain in the church. As so now that I have a shack, then it's I said, let me invite church. my mom, because I was still in contact with my mom all throughout. Let me invite my mom to come and see my shack. Yeah. So she came, she saw the shack, and then she went back, came back here in Johannesburg. And at some time in 2015, she said, no, man. I see you have a shack, but nah, I don't want you there. 
Uh, I also don't have much, but I think if we at least struggled together, it would make me feel better. So please come to join us back. We'll stay together. And then if we are struggling, at least we'll be struggling together. So that's how I then left Deben to stay with my mom here. Yeah. yeah. So that's how you escaped the, the whole the, the situation. Yes. Wow, man. Did you maybe try to go to the cops? Man, for what? Out there? Are there the cops? Are there good cops out there? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I couldn't even think about it. Because there is a thing that people instill in you. Because it's when fear. fear, yeah, it, it, there is something that says, even if you get this guy arrested, or all six of them, for that matter, are you going to be able to live? Because you you could or might die the same night they arrested, because they've got. I say to you, the guy has got eyes, ears, legs, and hands everywhere in, in Durban. The night that he got arrested, people would have known by then, because news travel fast. People would have known by then, and God knows what would have happened to me. Benefit to me. and I. No. So the guy at some point got another boy, uh, I do not know the story exactly. It is just a story that I was told. Mm. So he then had his way with this boy. I don't know, was it him alone or was it him and the other people? Mm. But then he had this boy and then this boy got him arrested. So he was arrested. But you know, man, with, with say, saying someone was arrested... We are saying that because someone was handcuffed and got into a van. But someone being arrested is someone going to jail. Before jail, it is trial. And then trial, you can either go back out or still go to, like, now jail. I don't think that guy went to jail because this is a story, there was a span of like about a year or two years when they said he's arrested and when they say he is out. And soon after he was out, he died. I don't know how how, how he was killed, but as soon after... Don't even matter. Good riddance, Jay, buddy. He died. Um, tough. What have you learned from this whole situation? Just Don't trust nobody, hopefully. Just in frozen. <laughs> I want to say there's a lesson of me as an individual. Yeah. That before I left home, I had a voice that was saying to me, go, you you are not where you should, you are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That voice that was telling me that I don't feel like I belong here. Yeah. And looking back now, it would have been great if I did not listen to that voice, which now is something that I carry with myself that I don't want to fear the unknown. I'd rather bend and then know that I, I got bent, so now I know. And the lesson learned living in the streets is if you can, just try and not go there. Because it is not just people like Kusom Nyam. All right. That was a crazy story. He got okie doke twice. Um, he's still a victim. That is, it's, it's crazy. I ain't got, I ain't even got the, uh, 